that I'd give the camera a check out and take a short series of pictures while I was actually standing in the uh, hatch on the seat waiting for the go from the flight director for the uh, EVA outside the spacecraft. So I turned the camera on and uh, actually I dismounted the camera again, turned it back on and took a short series, turned it back off and mounted it again and I was waiting for the go. It came a little earlier than I had expected. I was expecting it to get it over Guaymas. I thought maybe I'd lost track of time out there that uh, it was going faster than I had anticipated. But as we look back in, on the flight plan, uh, Chris actually felt we were ready to go over Hawaii and that since we were going to lose a portion of the nighttime on the other end of the uh, EVA due to the late launch, he decided to let us go over Hawaii. So I got my go a little earlier than I anticipated. At this time, I wanted to be sure that camera was going. We felt it was very important, so I dismounted it again, turned it on, looked at it to be sure it was running, and mounted it back up there again. I think uh, if we see this part of the film, you'll see there, uh, you'll see the efforts that I was making. This was my first of the gun. I'm trying to maneuver over to my left so I would be in front of Jim's window. I maneuvered approximately down the center line of the spacecraft, perhaps favoring just a little on the right. But the gun is actually providing the impulse for my maneuvers. I've started now a yaw around to the left with the gun. At this time, I knew, that I knew we had something with the gun because it was actually providing me an opportunity to, to control myself where I wanted to go out there. The uh, control was actually what we were trying to demonstrate on our EVA operation. We, uh, we knew a little bit about the tether dynamics, but we wanted to actually find out how well could a man outside a spacecraft. So I tried to use it very sparingly. I just used it enough to satisfy myself and to make maneuvers so that I felt in my own mind that I could control myself in both pitch, yaw, and translation. This is the type of control that you need to move from point A to point B in space. If you can control your pitch and your yaw and translate fore and aft, you can actually go from point A to B. Uh, roll really doesn't, isn't very important. The roll didn't bother me. I wasn't trying to control myself and roll because it's like our reentry. We don't really care about the roll as long as the pointing, directions, pointing direction is uh, accurate. On this one, I used the tether to come back any other time. This was the time it did because, as I pointed out, I actuated one lever with my left hand, the other with my right hand, and Jim pulled like the devil on the handle. And between the two of us, we got into the proper sequence that we knew we had to get into to close the hatch, and uh, this is the manner in which we close the hatch. Just to show you how training pays off, uh, Jim and Ed had actually completely disassembled that hatch. Another one at night. It looked like a, just a pinpoint of light in the sky, the same way that it does that satellites look from the ground when they're very high. And I saw another one, or I could even define the shape of it all, was the first one. And it looked like a, it looked a lot like an upper stage of a booster. 